Good morning. Welcome to Google I.O. As of this week, we crossed over 2 billion active devices of Android. We are clearly at an inflection point with Vision, and so today we are announcing a new initiative called Google Lens. Google Lens is a set of vision-based computing capabilities that can understand what you're looking at and help you take action based on that information. So for example, if you run into something and you want to know what it is, say a flower, you can invoke Google Lens from your assistant, point your phone at it, and we can tell you what flower it is. Or if you've ever been at a friend's place and you've crawled under a desk just to get the username and password from a Wi-Fi router, you can point your phone at it. So we've been working hard, and I'm really excited to announce our next generation of TPUs cloud TPUs, which are optimized for both training and inference. Each board is capable of 180 trillion floating point operations per second. And you know we have designed it for our data center so you can easily stack them. You can put 64 of these into one big supercomputer. We call these TPU pods. And each pod is capable of 11.5 petaflops. So cloud TPUs are coming to Google Compute Engine as of today. We are excited about designing better machine learning models, but today it is really time consuming. We want it to be possible for hundreds of thousands of developers to use machine learning. So what better way to do this than getting neural nets to design better neural nets? We call this approach AutoML. It's learning to learn. But the most important product we are using this is for Google Search and Google Assistant. So today, we're adding the ability to type to your assistant on the phone. Soon, with the smarts of Google Lens, your assistant will be able to have a conversation about what you see. I just tap the Google Lens icon, point the camera, and my assistant can instantly translate them into English. And now, I continue the conversation. What does it look like? These pictures should match. All right, it looks pretty yummy. Second, the Assistant is becoming a more connected experience. And today, I'm excited to announce that the Google Assistant is now available on the iPhone. We think the Assistant should be available on all kinds of devices where people might want to ask for help. The new Google Assistant SDK allows any device manufacturer to easily build the Google Assistant into whatever they're building. Starting this summer, the Google Assistant will begin rolling out in French, German, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Japanese on both Android phones and iPhones. By the end of the year, we'll also support Italian, Spanish, and Korean. Starting today, Actions on Google will be supporting transactions. It's a complete end-to-end -end solution for developers, including payments, identity, notifications, receipts, even account creation. The platform handles all the complexity. Hi, how can I help? I'd like delivery from Panera. Hi, this is Panera. I'll need your delivery address. Which one can I get from Google? We'll go with 1600 Amphitheater. What can I get you started with? Uh, the strawberry poppy seed salad with steak instead of chicken. Great. Are you ready to check out? Yep. OK. The total is $18.40. Are you ready to place the order? Yes. I'll just scan my fingerprint to pay with Google. And that's it. So first, we're announcing support for proactive assistance coming to Google Home. So for example, let's say I'm relaxing and playing game with the kids. Well, I can see that the Google Home lights just turned on. Hey, Google, what's up? Hi, Rishi. Traffic's heavy right now. So you'll need to leave in 14 minutes to get to Shoreline Athletic Fields by 3.30 PM. The assistant saw the game coming up on my calendar and got my attention because I had to leave earlier than normal. So today, I'm excited to announce hands-free calling coming to Google Home. You can call any landline or mobile number in the US or Canada completely free. Now, by default, we're going to call it with a private number. But you also have the option to link your mobile number to the Google Assistant. And we'll use that number whenever we recognize your voice. So whoever you call, let's know it's coming from you. And finally, we'll be adding Bluetooth support to all existing Google Home devices. So you can play any audio from your iOS or Android device. So today, we're announcing support for visual responses with Google Home. OK, Google, show my calendar for Saturday. Showing it on your TV. 
It'll show up right on the TV screen. I'll immediately get results from the assistant. And today, I'm excited to show you three new features we're launching to make it even easier to send and receive the meaningful moments in your life. Now, thanks to the machine learning in Google Photos, we'll not only remind you so you don't forget to share, we'll even suggest the photos and people you should share with. In one tap, you're done. Sometimes there's a special person in your life who you share just about everything with. I would love it if every photo I ever took of my kids was automatically shared with my wife. And that's why today we're also announcing shared libraries. We're bringing Google Lens right into Google Photos. And during your boat tour down the Chicago River, you took lots of photos. But it's hard to remember which building is which later on. Now by activating Lens, you can identify some of the cool buildings in your photos, like the second tallest skyscraper in the US, Willis Tower. You can even pull up directions and get the hours for the V-Deck. Finally, we know sharing doesn't always happen through apps and screens. And today, we're bringing it all together with the launch of photo books. They're beautiful, high quality, with a clean and modern design. But the best part is that they're incredibly easy to make, even on your phone. Photo books are available today in the US on photos.google.com and they'll be rolling out on Android and iOS next week. Today, we want to walk you through two themes in O that we're excited about. Jump straight in and walk through four new fluid experiences with live demos done wirelessly. What could possibly go wrong? My kids recently asked me to build a lemonade stand, so I opened up YouTube, and I started researching DIY videos, and I found this one. At the same time, I want to be able to jot down the materials I need to build for this lemonade stand. So to multitask, all I do is press the Home button, and boom, I get picture in picture. You can think of it as a kind of automatic multi-window. I can get it out of the way. I can launch Keep. I can add some more materials, so I know I need to get some uh, wood glue, like so. And then when I'm done, I just simply swipe it away like that. In O, we're extending the reach of notifications with something we call notification dots. It's a new way for app developers to indicate that there's activity in their app. You'll notice that the Instagram app icon has a dot in it. And this is indicating that there's a notification associated with the app. So if I pull down the shade, sure enough, you can see there's a notification. In this case, someone's wanted on a photo I'm tagged in. What's really cool is I can long press the app icon, and we now show the notification in place. Another great feature in O, that helps make your experience more fluid is autofill. With O, we've extended autofill to apps. So let's say I'm setting up a new phone for the first time, and I open Twitter, and I want to log in. Now, because I use Twitter.com all the time on Chrome, this system will automatically suggest my username. I can simply tap it, I get my password, and then, boom, I'm logged in. It's pretty awesome. We know from user studies that phone numbers are the most copy and pasted items. The second most common are named entities like businesses and people and places. In O, we're applying on-device machine learning, in this case a feed-forward neural network, to recognize these more complicated entities. So watch this. I can double tap anywhere on the phrase old coffee house, and all of it is select for me. No more fiddling around with text selection handles. So in O, we're investing in what we call vitals, keeping your phone secure and in a healthy state to maximize power and performance. The single biggest visible change in O is boot time. On Pixel, for example, you'll find in most cases your boot time is now twice as fast. And we've made all apps faster by default. So in O, we're adding wise limits to background location and background execution. These boundaries put sensible limits on usage. They're protecting battery life and freeing up memory. Today, we've launched Play Console dashboards that analyze every app and pinpoint six top issues that cause battery drain, crashes, and slow UI. For each issue the app has, we show how many users are affected and provide guidance on the best way to fix. We have never added a new programming language to Android, and today, we're making Kotlin an officially supported language in Android. So. I'm excited to announce that the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus will add Daydream support this summer with a software update. Well, I'm excited to announce that an entirely new kind of VR device is coming to Daydream, what we call standalone VR headsets. Well, the idea is you have everything you need for VR built right into the headset itself. 
There's no cables, no phone, and certainly no big PC. And the whole device is designed just for VR. And we've dramatically improved tracking with a technology that we call WorldSense. With it, your view in the virtual world exactly matches your movement in the real world. And it works by using a handful of sensors on the device that look out into your surroundings. And that means it works anywhere. There's no setup, there's no cameras to install, and with it, you really feel like you're there. These devices will start to come to market later this year. I believe we are on the verge of solving some of the most important problems we face. That's our hope. Let's do it together. Thanks for your time today, and enjoy Google I.O.